going to be working with some of our transformations that we've learned in the past. And in this case, they're going to be congruence transformations because we're into triangle congruence right now. Um, so a review transformation is a geometric mapping that can change the position, size, or shape of the figure. And in this case, today we're not so concerned with changing the size of the shape. Uh, we want to say the same for a congruence transformation. And we always have a pre-image, and it gets mapped onto its new image, or image as we call it. Um, so just a quick little review here. Uh, uh, the one new term that we have is isometry, it, which means it's a congruence transformation. So basically, after I transform a shape, it remains congruent. It has the same size, same shape, the corresponding parts of the uh, the congruent triangles are congruent, everything like that. So if I would reflect this triangle over this line, make it a mirror image over this line, it would stay congruent. That's all it is for a congruence transformation. It doesn't change the size or shape, it stays congruent. And our various transformations, our first one is the reflection, which we just did. Each point of the pre-image and its image are the same distance from the line of reflection. So if you look at our line of reflection right here, that means each corresponding point is the same distance away. So for example, C is the exact same distance away as H from that line of reflection. And same thing with B and G, right? They would be the same distance away from each other. Okay, the corresponding parts are the same distance. We have our translation. Translation means it just kind of shifts, it just moves. Moves all points to the original figure the same distance in the same direction. Um, and what we did in the past, what we'll do here in, in uh, a few chapters as well, is it moves in a horizontal direction and then a vertical direction, which technically can make a diagonal. So like if I look from K going to P, it moved horizontally this distance, and then it moved vertically that distance. Okay, and each point moves the exact same distance. So L would have moved the same distance horizontally and the same distance vertically as K did when it got to P. So these would be the same distance. These would be the same distance. That's our translation. It just shifts. And lastly, a rotation. Well, the important thing about a rotation is that it transforms around a fixed point called the center of rotation. And you can see our center of rotation right here, a fixed point through a specific angle and in a specific direction. So it'll always give you an angle measure and a direction. In this case, uh, it looked like I shifted, you know, somewhere about like 70 degrees. And since this is my pre-image right here, and it went this way, it looks like it is going clockwise. So for example, it probably said it's rotating 70 degrees clockwise. So that's an example of it going through a specific angle in a specific direction. And if you notice, each point is still the same distance away from that center. So if I look at T and Y, T shifted to Y, yet it stayed the same distance from the point of reflection, just 70 degrees clockwise over. So all we're going to do today is take a look, see what the transformation looks like, and identify if it's a congruence transformation or not. So I look at PQR, I got that graphed over here in blue. So I had four, two, I had three, negative three. I lied. I have three, negative three, and I have five, negative two. And then for my green guy, the new, uh, the new image, JKL, a J is at negative two, zero, K is at negative three, five, and L is at negative one, four. So all I wanna do, I graphed it, I already got that graphed. So the figure, the pre-image was the blue one, the image is the green one. So the original figure pre-image, the image is the green one. Identify the transformation. Well, let's take a look. Does it look like it reflected? I don't think so. It didn't rotate at all. So what really happened? If I look from P to J, it just kind of went down at an angle, didn't it? So we say it, it translated, it translated. So it went a certain direction left and a certain direction down. So all I want to do is, is verify that it's a congruence transformation. Well, to do that, I have to prove that 
all the sides are still the same dis or the same distance. Like a side, side, side. That will prove that they're still congruent. Well, how do we find the distance of a side? Distance formula. So I got to prove that PQ is the same distance as JK. And I have to prove that PR, use a different color here, PR is the same distance as JL. And I have to prove that QR is the same distance as KL. So remember for our distance formula, if I look at PQ here, find the distance between your X's or Y's, whichever you want to do first. So they are five apart. And then I find the distance between my X's. They are one apart. So five squared plus one squared, when I take the square root of that, I can simplify that. I don't necessarily need to, because I'm just checking to see if they're the same. So it's really the square root of 26. Then I check JK, see if it's the same. Distance of my Y's is five, so five squared. Distance between my X's is just one apart. So one squared, same thing. So far, so good. Looking at P dog. Distance between my Y's is four. So four squared. Add that to the distance between my X's is one. So one squared. Square root of 17. 16 plus one. Check JL. Distance between my Y's. Zero and negative four. They're four apart. So four squared. Distance between my X's. They are one apart. So plus one squared. Same thing. Square root of 17. And the last one. And it doesn't matter, I can check the y's or the x's first when I look at their distance. So QR, this is between my x's, I got 2 squared. This is between my y's is 1, so 1 squared plus 1 squared. And lastly, KL. So the distance between my x's is 2, so 2 squared. This is between my y's is 1, so 1 squared. And there we go, square root of five for both those. So it checks out. So I would say, yes, it's a congruence transformation. And to be specific, I proved it by side, side, side congruence. There you go. That's all there is to it.